Yeah. Well, yeah, can we please? Yes. Eva? Yeah. President of the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Um, fascinating discussion, guys. It's really, really interesting. I, I want to uh, pick up something you said, Secretary Hagel, and, and, and something you said, uh, uh, Mike, and see if we can sort of bring the, the conversation forward. You said, I think rightly, that the fight right now is about when, where, and how this war ends. And you, Mike, said that the real underlying fight for Putin is an ideological one and not a territorial one. Uh, or at least you said, you didn't say that not territorial, but the, ter the territory is about ideology. It's about the control of, of Ukraine as, uh, as Slavic peoples. It, it seems to me that we need to start to redefine the conflict in terms of what? Which is to say the future of Ukraine, not just as a territorial entity, but as a state and what it means. And we have agency in that far more uh, than the weapons and the immediate economic assistance we're providing, which is to offer the prospect and the promise of Western integration in a fundamental way. The EU is doing that with regard to the European Union. Uh, whether it's doing it fast enough or not is to be decided by the Europeans. But we are not willing to have an engagement with the Ukrainians about security. Because ultimately, the future of a Western integrated Ukraine is not only a democratic and a prosperous one, but a secure one. With whatever borders it may have, those borders may be the one on 91, they may be temporarily some other border. Uh, uh, who, who knows? Uh, Germany was not united until uh, 1989. Uh, Baltic states were not part uh, independent until 1991. Uh, so I, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the security element. Uh, of the relationship, not tomorrow, but what we need to start thinking about today in order to integrate Ukraine into the West in the longer, in the longer framework. Um, uh, good to see you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, always great comments, and um, I'll respond this way, and then Mike pick his piece up. Um, I agree with what you've just said, that we need to start thinking about that. Just like, uh, it's a different situation, obviously, but just like uh, a couple of years before the end of World War II, Churchill and Roosevelt started talking about what's the world gonna look like when this is over. Uh, and, and that may be going on. I mean, I, I don't know, because I'm not, the middle of anything anymore. I'm not privy to, to it all. And so that may be going on uh, in the Biden administration, or at least some of that conversation. Uh, but it needs to be addressed for the reasons that you implied in your question uh, as to where does this go after the uh, uh, when and how this, this gets resolved, because what then is the role of Ukraine in the West, they want to join NATO. They want to join the EU. Uh, well, as, as you know, you were ambassador to NATO. Uh, uh, there are certain requirements that a country has to undergo and commit to before they can be eligible to join uh, NATO. It's not just good enough we'd like to join. So all those kinds of questions are big questions, and they need to be thought, thought through. Uh, I don't think they're, they're, they're the forefront questions now because you've still got a war going on. And who long, how long that goes, nobody knows. But, but I think your point is that we need to start thinking about this and talking to our European friends about it. And, and maybe it, it's, it has started. So, I mean, I don't have much to add other than I agree with you. And that's the right, it's the right approach. I'd be interested in Ambassador Dalger's answer to his own question, by the way. Maybe we can do that later. Um, Dinner. I, 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 do, I do think you're exactly right. I mean, um, and uh, the Ukrainians have their own ideas. Uh, Rasmussen and, and Andrei Yermak actually published an idea for security. Um, and that's the other thing I meant to say about agency. Um, you all know President Zelensky has also published his own peace plan. Uh, and he's very frustrated 
that we don't give it enough attention. And I just, I just did exactly what he gets frustrated about. We talked about Xi Jinping's plan. Why is it, his, his is 10 point, 12 point as well. As a starting place, at least he's published one, we should, you know, Putin should publish his and that, that should help the negotiation. And they feel the same way on this, your question, Evo, which is uh, uh, on, the, on the EU integration, they, the, you know, they wanna go faster than the EU does, but there's a plan. Uh, on reconstruction. They want that to be not just an EU project, they want that to be an American project, a, a small D, small L project that, that involves the, the Koreans and the Japanese and, and everybody, right? Because they don't, they don't think just EU accession is gonna be enough for them. Uh, they also want the private sector to be very involved in that, and I think they're exactly right about that. And part of that has to be um, you know, consolidating and deepening democracy as they do that, right? You're, you cannot sequence those things. And that's a bit of a tension point, I would say, between some in, in Ukraine versus uh, some on the outside. But that's, that's gotta be a big bang project uh, at the end of the war. And, and partly because they have to attract back all the Ukrainians that have left, right? And you're not gonna attract them back if they just go back to you know, no. the ways that you were describing 10 or 20 years ago. And, and I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about that. There, there, there's a thriving civil society, even during the war. There's a private sector there. There's entrepreneurs there. They think they can play a, a big role in military production, by the way. Oh, and by the way, they think they have a really effective army that could provide <laughs> security for Europeans that don't have as effective security, right? So they think there's even financial benefit uh, from being more integrated on the security side. But nobody, including me, right now, is answering their fundamental question. We will not have all that investment come in if we don't have security. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not optimistic uh, that there would be a push for NATO membership uh, after the war. And so I think the more creative idea of, of bilateral military commitments, first and foremost with us, uh, um, that are deep, uh, long-term, um, and we go all in right when the peace happens, right? So all the weapon systems that we can't do because we're worried about escalation of the war, when I disagree with the colleagues, my colleagues in the Biden administration about that, but if we're at the end of the war, then attackums are not escalating the war, it's deterrence. And I think thinking harder about that, what, where the borders would be and what kind of weapon systems would provide that, where, where you just go all in and allow the Ukrainians to have the capabilities to deter a future war, that, that's where the attention should be.